So my name is Sarah Jade Woodhouse, and um, I probably should just tell you a little bit about me. I am a transgender woman, 48 years old, and I've been transi I transitioned oh probably nine years ago or so. Um, I was in a relationship. Um, with a woman, was married for five years, have a daughter, um, who is now 15 going on freaking 40, I hate that. <laughs> and um, I always kind of from when, from when I was four years old, I always knew something was different. And I uh, refused to, to acknowledge that. It wasn't until years later after I was married that we decided to separate and I decided to live full-time as a transgender woman. Started on hormones in January of 2005, which was um, an experience, especially since at the time I had no idea what kind of hormones I should be on, or what levels I should be on, or even what hormones would do to me. I just knew that I wasn't happy with what was going on in my body as it was. But then I found another doctor, just found it on my own because trying to find a doctor, we don't really have a list of doctors, we kind of just have to go on our own. And I found this doctor um, who was with the University Health Clinic, the Madsen Clinic, and she was really awesome. And I explained to her a lot of the stuff that I had found um, just in my own research. But at least she was open to hearing what I had found out through years of studying just transsexuality in general. You expect, I mean, I guess most people, they go to the doctor and they expect the doctor to be able to help them. I mean, that's what doctors do, they, they help you. And so when you go to a doctor with something that you're ailing from, whether that be a sore throat or a broken limb or cancer or, you know, transsexualism or gender dysphoria, whatever you know the term you want to use for it. If you go to a doctor, um, you expect them to know about it when they didn't. And I was like, I was like the source of source of authoritative information. Mm -hmm. That was kind of that was kind of weird, right? Because I'm like, how do I there was a there was a big part of me that said that was afraid. I mean how do you talk to a doctor and say you don't know what you're talking about. Mm. I know what I'm talking about. Listen to me. So I think that's kind of why there were so many years that I stayed on the regimen I was on, right? Because two things. I expected the doctor to know what was best for me, and I didn't know how to counter that. Like I remember um, I was working for IOTSE, which is a stage handlers union here in um, Utah. I was working for them the crate fell on my knees while they were bent and uh, kicked this leg out but then that foot just rolled over like that and so I broke clean break through that ankle. They came in and they were going to write my name on the, on the whiteboard in the room so that people knew who was in the room and I remember asking the nurse, I was kind of drugged out of my mind at the time, but I remember asking the nurse, I said, I go by Sarah, not my given name. She said, absolutely. And I remember falling asleep and waking up and there was my name, Sarah, spelled correctly, Sarah Jade, up on the whiteboard. That meant the world to me. I was like, you know, they don't have to do that. I think there's certain aspects of transition that eventually are over, right? But there's other aspects of transition that never end. I, I think I'm always evolving as a woman. So I would say my main takeaway just in life in general, not even the medical community, but this involves the medical community, involves um, I guess my outlook on life, period, is that yeah, there's some really tough times and I imagine my tough times aren't over yet. I'm sure they're still coming. But overall, I, I get a feeling that I get a feeling that progress is being made, that we're moving, 
We're moving forward in general. We're not moving backwards. It may seem like it's really super, <laughs> super slow in some instances, right? Um, but it's, it's happening. Progress is being made. And um, my advice to medical professionals, know your stuff. <laughs> I guess I should, I could think of a more colorful way to say that, but know what you're talking about when, when somebody comes in, there's, there's resources now, right? I mean, I talked a lot about there not there wasn't resources when I was when I first transitioned, but there's a ton of resources now, and they're out there. All you gotta do is find them, find them, and utilize them. Read up on it, know about it. Um, go to reliable sources. Talk to trans people. Be open enough to suggestions from your trans patients that you know you may not know everything. You may know a little bit more about this than you do, and that's okay. That's okay for them to know a little bit more than you. And be humble enough to be educated by them because in reality, they're not trying to con you. <laughs> they're not trying to say, you know, they're not trying to insult you by saying, hey, I know more than you do. They're just trying to get the care they really want, the care they really need. They just want to, they just want to feel right in their body. And you are the only person that can help them do that, really. Nobody else can help. So I'm kind of messing with this. There you go. That's it.